Good morning, my community. Jill here with North Texas Vegetable Gardening, canning recipes, a little bit of everything. We mowed and cleaned up the yard early this morning before it got too hot. Actually, it seems like it's a little bit cooler this morning than it was yesterday at this time. But today, while I'm dodging wasps, I'm gonna show you how to get seeds out of your yellow squash and hopefully the zucchini. And I say zucchini because there's a certain point that your fruit has to get to before you can really get some good seeds. Let's check it out. So we picked these squash and we've set them aside. I want them to sound a little hollow before I cut into them. Otherwise, the seeds don't look like they'll save very well. So let's cut into this one and see. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. So you can see where I cut right down the middle, guys, just kind of midway down, and then I just open it up and split it. And there are my beautiful seeds for gardening next year. So I have a big old strainer here, and I'm just gonna take my fingers and pull these seeds out of here. And again, if you do this too soon, guys, your seeds are still kind of wet and, and they don't look like they formed very well. Can you see that? And so I don't tend to have very good luck with those germinating the next year. So again, you want your fruit to get kind of hollow so you know things are drying out on the inside of it. At least this is how we do it. There may be other ways, but uh, yeah, this is how we do it. There's all those beautiful seeds. Squash number two here. Now what I'm gonna do with these after I get all of them out, I'm gonna leave them in the strainer and then I'm gonna rinse them out, rinse them off. Really good, you wanna get make sure you get all the meat off of them, any kind of membrane. Rinse them off and you want them to dry in a cool, dark place for about three or four days to make sure, see this one didn't have very many, to make sure that you get um, all the moisture out of them before you put them in your little envelopes. Look at this massive zucchini. It don't sound very hollow, but I'm gonna cut it open anyway. See guys, it is still too damp to get those seeds out. There's a lot of moisture in this. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave uh, the other ones that I have set aside out, but I'll do the same exercise with these zucchinis. Yeah, there might be a couple of good seeds in there, but uh, they really, let's see here. They really need to dry out a little bit more. And it takes quite a, quite a long time. I got them all cleaned off. Just gonna put them on a paper plate. A lot of people put them on napkins, but if you're not careful, they stick to the napkins. So these, ooh, gotta get this membrane out of there. These foam paper plates tend to, tend to do quite well. So here's some seeds I did last week. They're quite dry. And so now I'm going to test my germination. I'm gonna put these in some seed pods and those little planting trays. And I'm gonna see what kind of germination I get. Do I get 70%, do I get 100%, do I get 50%? And that'll give me a good idea on what to look for next year when I get ready to plant. 
So I have my seed tray ready with my seed starting soil, guys, and I go ahead and water before I put seed in. And then we add water to the tray beneath it so that it can wick up as well. I'm gonna let this sit about five minutes. I have my tray labeled and now I'm gonna start planting. I'm gonna go ahead, guys, and plant some more of the Tom Thumb lettuce and some of the little gem. So my first row is gonna be my squash. And we're gonna see what kind of germination we get. So I'm only gonna put one seed in each pot. And like I said, guys, this will give me a good idea of where we stand next year on our own harvested seed. Now our squash did fantastic this year. So if I can get some good germination, then I know since this is gonna be acclimated to my area and to the heat and to just the tolerance of its location, then I'm gonna have me some good seeds for next year. And this is just a good test. So I planted one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like 12. So we'll figure out what comes up. So now I'm going to plant some more of my lettuces, which you have already seen me do, so I'm not gonna put it on video, but I am gonna show you how they're looking, my seed starts look now. So here are the lettuces I started probably about eight to 10 days ago. You can see everything come up, came up except for the black Simpson. And I don't know if that's coming up or not, but it, it doesn't appear, well, maybe. Let's see here, let me, maybe. So we'll wait another couple of days, but this is just about ready for me to either put in one of my tubs or put in a three inch pot. And then these are the seeds that I started because they didn't germinate before and they're coming up pretty good. And here are my broccoli seeds. Almost got 100%, guys. So this, these need to be transferred into a three inch pot. And then here's more. Here's a, the Tom Thumb lettuce. Here is the Ice Queen. This is my arugula. And these two are bok choys. And then my celery is finally starting to come up. Now celery is a slow to germinate, but look, it's, it's starting to come up, guys. So we're gonna leave that alone, but I may take some of these lettuces and put it in a three inch pot to get ready to put in one of my high tunnels or in one of my outside raised beds. Here are my herbs and you can see those are doing pretty well, guys. Those chives finally decided to break ground and uh, we've got everything, just about everything coming up, I think, yeah. So my lavender up there is coming up, my Italian oregano chives, Peppermint is starting to show its beautiful face. Some lime basil and some thyme. And all this will be going in my Tower of Power. Here's a gander. And here are my seed starts that I've put in my little three inch pots. So these are doing good and they're gonna be ready guys to put into the ground sometime this week and they will be going into the ground sometime this week. I can't believe these sweet potatoes. Look at this, guys. I just hope that there's taters in there and that we're not getting all foliage. So uh, leave me some comments below and tell me if you've ever seen anything like that, but my goodness, even last year, I didn't see the heaping leaves foliage like I do this year. Purple hole peas out here are doing really, really well. And Greg is rehabbing uh, this raised bed. This was the first one that we built. It was full of fire ants. He got in there and dug it up and weeded it. And uh, now we're trying to figure out how we're gonna get the fire ants out of there. And uh, he's got some ideas. I'll do another video on that. But then we're gonna supplement this soil and I'm gonna plant beets here. Whew, it's dead gum hot out here, guys. So I've got some things in these tubs. All the tubs aren't planted yet because I'm kind of waiting for it to cool down again. Um, 
we are having, you know, some good mornings. We're around 78, 79, and then we're getting up to around 91, 92. But uh, the humidity, it's just really, really hot. But let me show you what I got going on in here. We are ramping up. These are those dragon tongue beans. And again, guys, I didn't have very many seeds, but I wanted to go ahead and plant some because if I can get some pods off of this to do some seed saving, that's exactly what I want to do. Carrots are starting to germinate. I've got to put some more in the ground, guys, because I'm going to do succession planting with all of my things. But surprisingly, these carrots are, are germinating in this heat. I got some spinach in here. These uh, are my uh, collards. And this is one little celery that I'm trying to see if I can make it come back. And these are more of my purple hull peas. So I did go ahead and get some more radishes in the ground because I want radishes and lettuce to come to fruition around the same time so that we can have us a delicious salad. I want you to look at this sweet potato plant. So guys, I dug in there the other day and I found a really big sweet potato, but what I also found is a huge fire ant bed and they stung me terribly. So I got out of there real quick and I think what we're gonna have to do when we go to harvest these is uh, pull that out and um, dump it unless we can figure out something and Greg is working on it to get rid of the fire ants in this soil. So I had celery in this tub all winter long. Ooh, there's a little onion. And, um, and it dried out, guys. And look, I think it reseeded itself. So we're gonna see, I'm gonna leave this alone and see if celery doesn't start popping in this tub. So we are moving right along with our fall gardening and our fall planting. I hope you are too. And um, let me know how you guys are doing. And um, if you did plant here in North Texas or in the Texas region, before that rain hit us last week. And uh, let me know if you're gonna be planting this week. Hoping for another significant cool down. Last week was very nice, um, but I'm hoping that we get another one because it is hot um, and it is humid. And it is, uh, it's brutal, guys. It's 11:19 in the morning. So uh, this is about the time that you have to say, I ah, can't do this anymore because it's too hot. So we've been out since about six this morning, getting things ready. And um, I wanted to uh, give you a garden update and I wanted to show you how to save your squash seeds. And uh, we love our community and we want to do everything we can to help you and uh, to give you some tools that's gonna help you uh, be a good gardener or a good farmer. Not that we know everything, but uh, we have done some tried and true methods and, and we try to share those with you. So take care, God bless, love you all. We'll be in touch.